the, choosing a niche and uh, and driving traffic and building a list. The the biggest thing that we've we've just been working on, the biggest thing that that I, that I wanted to teach on this recording, something that that obviously you can learn from now, but you can refer back to in the future, is that the place to make profit is when you actually sell. And obviously we've gone through a number of different things that you you could possibly sell. Okay, so you can obviously sell an ebook, you can sell uh any number of back end products, CDs, MP3s, videos, DVDs, classes, you can sell memberships that have access, that have tools, that perhaps there's a newsletter that you send out, those are all memberships. Then you could have coaching programs. You can have a cookie cutter coaching program, you can have advanced coaching program, you can have group coaching programs, you can have one on one coaching, you can have email coaching, telephone coaching digital coaching, you can send out recordings, there's all different types of, of, of coaching. In all of these products, what you're going to be doing is teaching other people how to do something in each one of these products and then selling that particular product online. Now, obviously, some things that go into this, you're going to need to know the mechanics of you know how to actually convert. Some of you may need to know how to convert a Microsoft or, or another company's uh, processing document, word processing document, to a PDF. You may need to know how to do the recording of an MP3. You may need to know how to set the membership up and collect the income on a monthly basis. You may need to know what's the best way to deliver that coaching. Okay, that's all information that you can gain, obviously, through the products that either I put out or other marketers put out that teach you step-by-step how to do each one of those things. Keep in mind that we all put out a lot of products that teach you how to do each step, but sometimes we don't spend enough time in those products pulling it all together. Of course, that's what this phone call is about today, is this, this, this idea that you are going to have to create products and sell them in order to make money. Okay, now, let's move on to niche selection. I get a lot of questions about niche selection. You know, people will come to me and say, you know, I've, you know, I've got this idea, I've got this little hop of mine, and, and um, you know, I've heard online that you just kind of follow your heart and the money will follow. Well, the first thing I want to say is that, that that's not always true. Okay? If, if your heart is in something that only 10 other people on the entire earth are interested in, then there's only 10 people possible on the entire earth that might ever buy from you. Okay, so it's extremely important that whatever you go into, there is a demand for it. So somebody out there, there's a group of individuals that that want the particular information that you have. Okay, and you are able to to um, to charge a price for that particular information. Now. One thing that I do hear a good bit is, well, you know, I, I see that, that in some, some particular niches there's tons of free information out there. How can I go about charging for that information? Well, what happens is many times people will pay for information that's readily available for free online um, in order to get it all in one place. Let's go back to this dog training example. Let's say you're a dog trainer, okay? And I, I would imagine that just about every trick in the book and everything that you need to do to teach your dog to do all the basic things, okay, to, to be a good dog, probably all of that information is available for free somewhere online. However, if someone were to want to get all of that information, they'd probably have to subscribe to about 25 different lists and get 25 different emails every single day from various dog trainers. They'd probably have to search in the search engines for hours to catalog all that information, and then to put it all in place, they'd have to kind of copy and paste it or save those web pages so that they would have it all together. So someone could literally spend dozens of hours trying to find all of this dog training information and then organize it for themselves, and in the process, they may end up um, subscribing to a bunch of email lists. There's lots of things that might have to happen. Okay, so let's just assume that all of this information that someone has to spend dozens of hours looking for that particular information, let's just assume now that you are able to compile all of that information together into an ebook, and let's say you put a price of $97 on it. Okay, now, what will happen is that some people, okay, who are, and I'll just call it for what it is, okay, they're broke, they have no money, Maybe they have no job, okay? Maybe they are they're unlucky, okay? They are stingy, okay? So they have the money and don't want to spend it. 
They have no motivation. They've, they've, they've just fallen on hard times. Maybe it's not their fault, okay? But maybe they've just fallen on hard times. Because you've got all of these different reasons that people don't have money. These people might have a lot of time. They're sitting home all day, watching TV, surfing the Internet. They've got plenty of time to go search this free information. But those people are not going to buy from you. However, let's look at someone who, 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 who it, is, is privileged in life, okay, and, uh, and has a profession and is, has gone to school and learned a profession and, and, uh, and, and has a good job and, and, and works 40 or 50 hours per week. Okay. The question would be, if they want to learn how to train their dog, do they have the time to spend dozens of hours looking for this free information? Do they have dozens of hours? The answer is no. These are the individuals who will willingly pay you really whatever price that you put on the information, uh, as long as it's in, in some way reasonable and and uh, and and in, in your particular niche that that it relates to the amount of time that you're saving someone. Okay. I know for myself. If something saves me, you know, 20 minutes, it might be worth $100 of my time, okay? Uh, and for some people, if it's something saves them five minutes, it's worth $100. For other people, it may saves them an hour, it's worth $100. But in many, 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 many cases, an ebook can easily sell $97 if it's able to save someone time. And so what this means is that even if the information is available for free online, oftentimes you can charge for that same, that very same information. The second thing that is key here is that whatever that you are selling, okay, you're selling it to individuals who uh, who have a proven propensity to, to, to spend money. So there's a number of different niches out there where this particularly happens. And I'm going to name some of those niches. It won't be an exclusive list. I'm going to name some of those niches here in, in just a few minutes. I'm going to name what they are, but I want I want you to think about how you're able to evaluate your own particular niche and whether or not it will make you money. I'm going to give you a few ideas of ways that you can kind of look into, will my particular niche make me money? Now, these ways are not foolproof, okay? Uh, and and I, I'll tell you, I'm going, to, I'm going to go over one way that is, in my opinion, not a very good way to find out if you have a good niche, and this is the way that I hear so many people teaching. So I want to just talk about this for a second, and that's called keyword research. Okay? Keyword research is only a tool. Okay? Just when you're gardening, you, know, you, you might need 18 different tools to make a nice garden. Okay? Keyword research is one of those 18 tools. Uh, okay, for example, if you're comparing it to gardening. Keyword research is just one tool you will use in determining your niche. Okay, so the idea here is, you know, so often we hear with keyword research that, you know, let's just say you get a million people every single month are looking for information on something, okay? And then, you know, maybe you can take it to the next level and say there's only a thousand people online that are selling or, or, or uh, are marketing in that particular area. So you might look at this and say, well, that's a pretty good ratio. I mean, you've got a million people every month. That uh, looking for information, only a thousand people selling information. Why don't I jump into that market? Unfortunately, keyword stats are, are um, number one, they are they're not reliable online. I, I, at this time, I do not believe there's a single reliable keyword research tool on the market today. And the search engines are, are, are very, very tight with that information because it's competitive information. So the search engines make literally millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, from their search results, and they, they simply don't want to give that information out. The second thing is, even if you have numbers that are estimated by someone, and there's a number of different ways that those numbers can be estimated, and so now we've got this estimation. You've used a keyword tool that gives you an estimation of this ratio. Just because there's this ratio does not mean that anybody will buy anything. Okay, and I, I off the top of my head, I, I don't have an idea here, but you know, let's let's just say that uh, this, you know, people are looking for uh, something faddish. Something that, you know, let's just say it just happened politically yesterday. Something political happened yesterday, and a million people searched for that one term yesterday. Okay, But let's say it's something that's completely political, and there's no way that you can monetize that. Having a million people searching means nothing. Okay, However, you might have a different niche where only a 1,000 people search each month. Okay, 
But if someone searches in that particular niche, they're very interested in getting information, and they're willing to, say, pay, for example, thousands of dollars a piece to learn that particular how-to step. Okay, then that might be a good niche. Okay, Or we might have something in between where, say, 10,000 people search for information every single month in a niche where people spend money. Okay, now, how do we find out where people spend money? Well, people won't spend money online uh, just about the same way that they do offline. Okay, they, they spend money on the very same types of things uh, online as they do offline, uh, especially when it comes to information. So if we look at something offline, okay, then one area that, that we have access to is books. Okay, so there's books online and there's books offline that tell us that we're able to actually look and see how many copies of these books are sold on each particular topic. This this information right here will tell you exactly where people are spending their money. Okay, so for example, if the, a bestseller that sold a million copies last month, okay, we know that a million people last month purchased, spent money out of their pocket to get that particular how-to information. Okay, this isn't a search; this is real information. So what I do, what I recommend that you do, okay, is go to you can go to the booksellers online. You can go to Amazon.com. You can go to BarnesandNoble.com. Okay. You can also go look at offline bestseller results. Okay. So you can look for bestseller results and simply look at, say, the top 10, top 20, or top 50 nonfiction, okay, how And this will tell you where people are spending money today. Okay. Another way that you can do this is to kind of spy, look into where people are spending money on advertising. Okay, now we, we talked earlier about the only way money online is to sell something. Okay, now if you are in the advertising business, okay, what you are doing is you are selling people the opportunity to, to take traffic from one individual and send it to another so that something can be sold. What that means is that if you see someone repeatedly advertising, the assumption is that their advertising dollars are paying off. So let's look at at an offline example. Look at an offline example. Let's say you open up a deli. So you open up a deli, a sandwich shop. Let's call it a sandwich shop. You open up a sandwich shop, and let's say you take out an ad for $1,000 in the local, like a, a coupon book. Okay, and it's got this coupon in it that says buy one get one free sandwich. Okay. Now if you're a savvy business person, and most people who operate sandwich shops, I imagine that they are, they wouldn't operate them for very long. Okay. If they send out spend a thousand dollars on advertising this month, then they need to get in well, at a minimum they need to get in a thousand dollars in new business. Now theoretically they should get in three to four thousand dollars in new business. Okay, now we know that when somebody's starting out they may not triple that money. You know, they may just break even on the advertising. But that's okay with them because those people are going to continue to come back. Okay, so if we look at this sandwich guy and he spent a thousand dollars the first month on advertising, the second month he does it again, the third month he does it again, the sixth month he does it again, we can assume that he's making money. Okay? Now Maybe in this particular brand new person, maybe he's not even quite doing the $1,000. Okay, but every single month he gets closer to it. So he has some belief that it's going to pay off. Okay, but if nobody's buying sandwich, then he's going to stop advertising. Okay, now if we go online and we look at the search engines, okay, some of the search engines, and for competitive and legal purposes, I won't mention their names right now, okay, but some of the search engines online sell advertising. Okay. Now, just like this sandwich maker, the people that are buying this advertising are people that have something to sell. Okay? Now, if they buy the advertising instead of in a monthly basis, people buy it literally by the day, they buy it by the click, they buy it by the week or the month or whatever the case is. So if we look at, 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 at pay-per-click, which is done literally by the click, okay, and it, it's posted every single day so that you're able to see who is advertising. And if you go, if you take your particular search term, okay, the particular term of your niche, and you were to type that in and find that, for example, there was nobody advertising under that that niche, then there's two ideas here. One is that 
that just nobody has a product in that niche. Um, probably not the case, but you can look into it and see if that is the case. Okay. Probably what's happening is that nobody has been able to find a way to make that particular search term profitable. And this is probably not something I could have said five or ten years ago because the Internet was new and there's lots of undiscovered things. But, but really right now we're moving into a mature Internet and you're going to find that many, many, many of the very small niches, people are already into those particular niches. So you are going to have competition. Just deal with it. I have plenty of competition, okay? but I outsell a lot of my competition. And when I look at my numbers, when I look at my dollars per traffic and dollars per lead and dollar per subscriber, you know, I, I'm way ahead of a lot of my competition. Okay, And obviously, there's some, some very specific reasons for that. You can do that, too, in your particular niche. So getting back to these search terms, Let's say that you find that there's 10 advertisers that are advertising in your particular niche, okay, and they're all selling something. Okay, Now, if we just look at them today, we can only make one assumption, and that is that today they might be trying it out. They might have been there for three years, but we don't have that information. Today is what we're working with. Okay, Now, if we, if we take a look at that search page every day for the next 30 days, and we find that over the course of those 30 days, eight out of those 10 advertisers are still pouring money into that advertising, what can we assume? We can assume that those eight advertisers are making money okay, or they are, they're making some type of a return and they're tweaking things in such a way so that in the future they'll actually be profitable. But what we can assume is over time, in the longer time period we use, we can assume that those individuals are making money and that that particular niche would be profitable. Okay. Now, it, it, when I say that it would be profitable, I mean that people are spending money. So obviously you are going to have to learn how to drive traffic, create subscribers at a lower cost than what you're selling your item for. Okay. So really what we're talking about here is, is revenue. It may not necessarily be profitable uh, necessarily, but we're seeing people – pay money. And normally if people are paying money, you can find a way to make that profitable. So these are two ideas of, of ways that you can find out where the money is online. Okay, you can't just do keyword research and find that there's billions of people clicking on something. Okay, if they're clicking on yesterday's political news or they're clicking on some hot uh, movie star, okay, that there's nothing that you can do to monetize that. Okay, and that hot movie star is not going to be hot in six months, then you're, you're simply wasting your time. So what you want to do is go into the how-to areas okay, where you can teach people how to do things in areas where people are spending money. Now, I'm going to give you a short list of what some of those, some of those areas are. Now, this is non-exclusive. Um, obviously, I can't guarantee that if you go into one of these niches that you can make it profitable. I have no idea how savvy you are. I don't know how intelligent you are. I don't know what you know about the web. I don't know if you're willing to learn how to drive traffic or build a list. Many of you are. I know a number of you are, okay, and you've got the ability, okay, but I just want you to know that you can't just jump into a niche uh, just on my word that it's one of those those top niches and it, it's just going to fancy and pan out. You're going to have to create good products. You're going to have to build relationships with people. You're going to have to build traffic. But some of these niches are uh, fitness. I've already mentioned that. Uh, stock area, stock trading is, is, is a good niche. Okay, How to uh, generate, uh, how to do contracting work. Okay, so teaching people, and, and by contracting work, I mean how to market your contracting work. Okay, so, you know, marketing for plumbers or marketing for electricians or marketing for painters or marketing uh, for, for woodworkers. Okay, so, you know, there's plenty of contractors out there. There's literally probably millions of contractors uh, just in, in, in the United States. That, that are good woodworkers and good painters and, and, uh, and, and, uh, good plumbers and, and good electricians, but they don't do enough business. And the reason they're not doing enough business is they don't know how to advertise and they, you know, they don't know how to, they don't know how to do good business. They, they don't know how to run a business. They're trained as a plumber. They wanted to go out on their own. They hung their shingle up. They started spending money on the yellow pages and now they're not making as much money as they were working for somebody else. Okay, these are all people that will buy how to information. Okay. Um, any type of marketing is, is, is normally good, whether that's offline or online. Um, any of the sales areas, any time that you can teach somebody to increase their income, 
Okay, so for example, if someone is a salesperson and uh, he's, you know he's not making very good money, and you are an expert closer, and you can teach him how to take his leads and convert them, then there's money in that, whether that's online or offline. There's money in teaching people how to do internet types of things. Okay, there's you know plenty of people make money teaching people how to drive traffic, teaching people how to build a list, teaching people how to create products, how teaching people how to buy and sell on eBay, teaching people how to use social networks. I mean, there's just literally teaching people how to set up a blog. I mean, all of these things that you may already know how to do. There's there's plenty of money in that. There's new people that come online every single day. Uh, so let's see, we got fitness, stock training, how to areas, marketing offline, marketing online, uh, the internet. Uh, what are some other hot areas? Um, let's just stop, right? Getting into business for yourself. That, that's a hot area, getting into business. And this can be offline or online, uh, teaching people how to do uh, coaching, consulting, uh, how to get appointments offline. You know, that's huge, absolutely huge. So all of these areas right here are areas that tend to do very well. And obviously, if you spend some time on Amazon or some of the search engines, then you'll be able to, to find other areas where people are spending uh, their money. And my guess is each one of the areas that I've just mentioned, if you were to look at maybe not the top 10, but the top 100 list on Amazon for any given day of the week, you would find one book for each one of these topics that, that, that is selling and is a bestseller out of all the nonfiction books for, for that particular for that particular day. Okay, um, moving on, let's move from niche selection to the other two items that we've talked about, and that is generating traffic and building a list. Okay, those two things, in my opinion, uh, in everybody's opinion on the first one is that you can't sell anything without traffic. And obviously, traffic is simply visitors, you know, people coming to uh, your website. Uh, from somebody else's website online, okay? And that, it's almost impossible for you to sell anything online without traffic, just like it would be impossible for you to sell a sandwich uh, at, at your local uh, sandwich shop if you didn't have people coming in to the sandwich shop every single day. It, 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 it simply wouldn't happen, okay? And, and so you absolutely have to have traffic, just like you do offline. If you're a dentist offline, you've got to have, you know, people coming in and having dental work done. And, and the same thing online. You absolutely have to have the traffic. Now, I'm a huge believer in building a list. And, uh, I've done tons of teaching on it, so I'm not going to do it here. But the, the idea behind the list is, you know, if somebody comes to my website and they are traffic, for example, okay, they might have a 1% chance of buying a $97 ebook. Okay, and even a smaller chance of opting into some of my coaching or, and then even a smaller chance of deciding to work with me one on one. Okay, uh, on their very first visit. Okay, so uh, there's only so much money that can be made on that 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 very first visit. There's very 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 small amount of money that can be made on that first visit. However, if instead of turn, trying to turn that that traffic into a quick buck, if instead I allow that person to become a subscriber, okay, so that that I'm able to communicate with them, I'm able to send them out emails, I'm able to give them news releases, I'm able to ask them questions. Um, I, I'm able to ask them questions to find out exactly what their needs are, then what I find is that instead of 1% of that traffic purchasing, then those subscribers, 10%, 15%, 20% of the people that come onto my list will purchase eBooks, will purchase MP3s, will opt into my coaching, will decide to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Well, then obviously, there's more people at each of the lower levels. So more people buy eBooks than buy a more expensive MP3, than buy a more, even a more expensive CD series, than even a more expensive coaching, and then even more expensive one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, but the bottom line is that a much higher percentage of subscribers will eventually buy because there's a trust that, that is built up. So in my opinion, both of these both of these items are, are absolutely critical. Now let's go back to what we've talked about today. We've talked about the idea that you have to choose a profitable niche. You can't just find something that you like to do. Okay, You, you have got to find a, a, a profitable niche and then work in, in that particular niche. Uh, then the last thing that you've got to do is sell products. Okay, Now, I'm going to talk now about traffic 
Okay, and I'm not going to teach you how to do it. I, there's, I've got plenty of materials out there. Most of you on this call, I think, are members of one of my coaching programs, so you've already got the information on how to drive the traffic. And I'm going to talk about building a list. And, again, I'm not going to talk much about, about how to build the list. I'm, I'm going to talk more about um, about why, you, why, why that list is so important and why you've got to make sure that you are building that list. Okay. With traffic, there's many, many, many different ways that you can drive traffic to your website. You can obviously use article marketing, which is what I do. And I get almost all of my first response traffic from article marketing. You can run advertising. Okay? You can do pay-per-click advertising. You can offer press releases. You can work the social networks online and, and try to get people to become involved in your website. You can do blog marketing. And you can you can build a blog and, and uh, work on getting traffic that way. You can do search engine optimization and and, and try to get people to become involved with you um, th uh, through the search engines. Um, you can do joint ventures. Uh, you can get involved in affiliate marketing. Okay, so you can create a product and have other people sell it, and the other people that sell it will drive traffic to you. So you've got a number of different ways that you're able to drive traffic. In my opinion, and if, if you look at successful people online, okay, they do, what normally happens is they become an expert in one or more areas. Okay, now I, I want to be careful as I say more because normally they become an expert in one traffic source first. And then once they're making money and they're an expert in one traffic source, and that traffic source is converting for them and making them money, okay, then what they will do is add one more traffic source. Okay, they don't try to do 87 different traffic sources all at once, and I see so many beginners doing just that. You, 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 you try all of these different traffic sources. You don't track what you're doing. You have no idea where the traffic's coming from, and obviously that's frustrating because some of the things that we've talked about here uh, do not work as well as – as, as others, okay, and that none of these work unless you become an expert, okay, so in article marketing, if you just write a few articles and pop them on, a, on the web, you're probably not going to get much traffic. If you just, if you spend 50 bucks on pay-per-click one time today, probably you're not going to get very much traffic. If you write one press release, you're probably not going to get much traffic. You, you, everything has to be done massively, and you've got to become an expert at it, and the only way you can become an expert at it is doing it. And you're not going to become an expert uh, overnight. You, you simply have to do it and do it and do it and test it and get better and study it and learn from people that are doing it and find out what other people are doing and maybe even take some coaching in a particular area of traffic, okay, in order to become an expert. Now, in my own case, I have become an expert in article marketing. Okay, now, article marketing in and of itself is not necessarily any more special than any of the other sources of traffic, okay? The only thing is that in my case, I have personally become an expert, okay, just like I could have become an expert in pay-per-click or press releases or blog marketing or anything else, just like many others also have done, okay. So, obviously, the one traffic source that I teach on is the one that I know inside and out, and that, of course, is the article marketing. I, I know article marketing inside and out. But that doesn't mean that you've got to stop with article marketing. You can, you can do any of these other traffic sources. The bottom line is that you have to drive traffic to your website. Okay? And we go back to, eh, just go back to article marketing here. You know, some article marketing requires a massive effort. So does everything else. Pay-per-click advertising requires a massive effort. You, you find out nothing almost from pay-per-click until you spend several thousand dollars. You know, there's companies out there that operate big budgets that do, you know, literally millions and millions of dollars every single month. They spend, a, you know, there's people out there that spend 800000 900000 a million dollars a month on pay-per-click, okay? Because of the volume, they're able to go in. They've gotten so many clicks that they're able to go in, and they know exactly which keywords convert. Okay, but if you go in and spend fifty or hundred bucks, and then you only get three leads, and you know you really haven't uh, done enough, you, you, know, you haven't, uh, you know, you, ha you haven't, um, you, you've only gotten the traffic to one or two or three different keywords. You have no idea which ones are the best ones. Okay, and unless you're going to spend some real money on it, you probably can't do it. Uh, social networks, if you get into social networking, you are going to have to drive some pretty significant traffic to, to make those social networks uh, 
uh, traffic work out for you. You're going to have to drive significant traffic. And so when we go back to article marketing, my first 10 months online, I personally wrote 150 articles every single month. And about my seventh or eighth month online, I started paying other people to write articles. I got up to where I was submitting 2,000 articles per month. And then we've scaled back somewhat uh, since then. Okay? So massive, absolutely massive effort to make it work. Well, if you've only got the time to write two articles a month, you're probably not going to be able to make article marketing work for you. You're probably better off investing money in pay-per-click or, you know, uh, I would say putting time into social networks, but if you don't have time to write articles, you probably don't have time for work in the social network. And one thing about traffic, you know, you're, there's no such thing as a perfectly free traffic source. You're either going to spend time generating that traffic, such as with article marketing, okay, or you're going to spend money generating that traffic, which is the case with pay-per-click, uh, some of the other areas. I mean, all of the areas you can spend money on, I spend money on article marketing. I don't personally write the articles anymore. I pay other people the articles. If you're doing search engine optimization, you can do it yourself or you can pay somebody else to do it. Press releases, you can write them yourself or you can pay someone else to do them. Social work networks, you can do it yourself or pay somebody else to do it. Pay-per-click, there's only one choice. Pay-per-click, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to pay for it. Okay. So you have to have the traffic. And the, the thing is, if you don't have the traffic, you're going to have to find a way to get the traffic. If you only have the time to write five articles per week or five articles per month, you are going to have to come up with another traffic source. It, it, it's not going to simply just magically that traffic's going to come because you're writing a few articles. It's simply not going to happen. You're, you're going to have to do a, a massive effort there. And no matter what the traffic source, no matter what anybody tells you, you're going to have to have a massive effort. There's millions and millions and millions of people online just like you that are trying to get traffic to their website. Okay? There's just a huge amount of competition for getting traffic to the website. And uh, if you don't become an expert at driving traffic in at least one area, you'll probably never sell anything. And so that's critically important. Okay? The next thing is the list. Now, I've already talked about why the list is so important. Okay? Now, I, because I've talked about why the list is important, okay, you know why the list is important. You also know how to, to build a list, and for, perhaps for the person that doesn't, the way that I do it, the way that I teach, the way that most successful people online do it is they build what's called a squeeze page. A squeeze page is a web page that uh, gives people one option, one option at, at their website. The one option is to become a subscriber. There's no other option. Okay? You can't buy your way in. You can't uh, search around the website. You have one option, and that's become a subscriber. That's, that's the strict definition of a squeeze page. Now, what most of us do is we give away something free, in exchange for someone's name and email address. Once we have that name and email address, then we begin a marketing process. Okay, now, that marketing process involves building a relationship, okay, and that means writing emails and communicating with people, and then it involves finding out what they need, what they want, and then providing it for them, marketing, whatever it is that you find out what they want. Okay? And building a relationship is not writing 100 emails and popping it into your autoresponder campaign. Okay. Normally, when you do something like that, they come across as being very impersonal, and you've gotten those emails before. They're just obviously autoresponder emails. You know they're not coming from any person, and so you don't even spend much time on it. Okay. Now, at the same time, that doesn't mean you're sporadically sending out an email twice a month. Okay. You are going to have to put a series of emails into your autoresponder campaign so that you can maintain contact with people. In your autoresponder, whatever company that you use, you're going to have to find a way and every company should have a different way to do it, okay? but you're going to have to find a way to see which emails get opened and which emails people click through. Okay? And what you'll do is if you queue up, say, 20 emails, you'll find that some emails get lots of opens, people that read them, and then some emails get very few. What the problem is, if people are not opening your emails, is normally that your subject line uh, lines on the ones that are not open are not as good as the ones that are. And the only way that you'll get better at that is by actually doing it. You can't guess your way into it. Write 20 emails, write 20 subject lines. At the end of the month, dump the bottom 10 and write 10 more. And at the end of the next month, dump, dump the bottom 10 and write 10 more. If you do that every single month for a year, at the end of the year, you will have 20 of the best subject lines on earth, Okay, if that's what you're actually doing. And you're putting some thought into creating those new subject lines. The same thing with the body. 
Okay, if you're asking someone to go buy something and one email that you write, 10% of the people click through to your sales page. On another e- email that you write, 90% click through. Well, the one where 90% click through, those people are going to pay you more money in the long run than the, pe- than the emails that only 10% of the people click through. So it, it's, it is, uh, it's absolutely critical that you study that also. You study those click rates. Your autoresponder should be able to do that for you. If you don't know, shoot your autoresponder company an email and ask them how it's done. But you have to be able to know how many people are clicking through on each one of your emails. Then do the same thing. Write 20 emails today, load them up, let them run for a month, the 10 out of the 20 that are performing the worst in terms of click-throughs, delete them and write 10 more. The next month, delete your bottom 10 and write 10 more. And then at the end of a year, you will have emails that convert, and you'll know which ones that convert, and those emails will be making uh, will be making you money. All of the stuff, and I'm, I'm going to move on now. We've, we've talked about everything. We've talked about niche selection. We've talked about traffic. We've talked about building a list. We've talked about products. Now, I realize I have not talked about We've been, on the, we've been on this call now for an hour, and I have not talked about the step-by-step on how to do each one of these things. Like I said, I've, I've got, I believe, I've got, I've got somewhere between 100 and 200 hours of instruction on all of this stuff. And if I had to guess, it would be closer to 200 than 100, uh, but somewhere between 100 and 200 hours of information. And obviously, I can't compress all of that into an hour. The critical point, the critical thing that you you have got to take away from today, okay, is that on each one of these particular areas, you have to get good at it, okay, and you have to you have to know why or why not something is occurring. So, for example, in the, in the with the niche selection, you can't just choose something because you want to choose something fun. Okay, you have to choose something that is going to create money for you. On driving traffic, you have to drive the traffic. If one thing's not working, try something else. Okay, when I first started, I tried like 20 or 25 different sources of traffic, and I tracked every single one of them to find out which ones make me money. Okay, and then I found that for me, article marketing worked better. You know, be the same thing for you. But I tracked every single one, and I was relentless about it until I found out what worked. Same thing with building a list. I've written probably thousands of emails in the last few years. Many of them were total flops. Nobody bought anything. Nobody read some of them. Nobody is a strong word. If I send an email out to 20,000 people, you know, I may get 500 or 1,000 people read them, and then people, some people will click through. But, but, but really in terms of percentage, some of those emails I write are very low per- very, very low open rates and very low clicks. Obviously, I don't run those anymore. I run the ones that, that, that make me money and I send those out again. You've got to do the same thing. And, and there's no substitute for doing it and learning it yourself. There's no magic trick that anybody can give you, okay? There's, there's no magic trick that anybody can give you that says do it exactly like this and it'll work. Okay, we can all give you guidelines. We can give you directions to go we can point you in the right direction but what we what we're unable to do is um is is tell you if you'll write exactly this then this is going to work okay i can tell you if you'll write 20 emails you'll find that 10 of them perform better than the other 10 and then you can you can continue to move on obviously you can take courses on how to write better Okay, and how to write more more persuasively. You can do that. But just because you have any given persuasive line that you can just pop into your email doesn't make that email work. Okay, it's the total package. And a lot of it is the relationship that you build with people. Okay, I, I genuinely believe that when I look at my own list and I look at the, the people that are co- that are coaching with me, that work with me one on one, the people that work with me in a group environment, the people that spend send spend money with me every single month, I honestly don't believe that they're with me because of some special one email or some special sales page. They're with me because you're with me because of that relationship that trust that's been developed, you know that I can deliver. And you have to do the very same thing in your particular niche. You have to deliver. Uh, and and the only way that you're going to do that is by writing emails and by practicing and by asking your list uh, uh, what, what they want to learn about. And then you have to monetize it. You can spend all month working on article marketing. You can spend all month working on the list. But if you don't have a product, 
if you don't have a sales page, then once again, you're, you're not going to make, you're not going to make money. So in closing, I, mean, I, I recommend that, uh, that if, if at this point you're listening to this and you, and you, you still don't have a complete picture of the end result of what it takes to be profitable. I'm not talking about the step-by-step mechanical and technical things. Okay, there's plenty of products out there. I put products out. I have coaching. Plenty of other people that, that specialize in some of the same things that I do. There's plenty of information on how to do the technical stuff. The point, the purpose of this particular recording of this phone call is to give you the big picture. If you're not quite sure that you have it, I recommend going back and listening to this recording from the very beginning. Uh, obviously, those of you that are listening live, uh, you'll, you'll have the recording shortly. But for those of you who listen to this as a recording, go back, listen to it again. Okay, I have, I've done everything possible to give you the meat, to give you, to give you the information that you need to take your business to the next level in terms of, of profit. Once you understand that, you'll be able to plug everything else in, no matter what the traffic, no matter how you build your list, no matter what your products, you'll be able to make profitable. But you've got to have this big picture. So I recommend, if you don't have it yet, go to the beginning, listen to this again with notes. You may have to listen to this three or four times. I've packed a lot of good information in here in terms of, of, uh, of generating profit. Once you understand the profit picture, the next step for you is going to be to go in and ask yourself, what am where, what is my weak link? Okay, do I have the products and I, I kind of communicate with my list okay, but I'm not driving any traffic. Okay, or maybe you, you're, maybe you're good driving traffic, but you, you can't get them to convert into subscribers. Okay, you, you probably need to take some training or some coaching. You need to learn how to do that. Okay, may, let's say you have traffic, you have the list, but nobody's buying. Okay, well, maybe you need to take, uh, some classes on writing a sales page. Maybe you need to, to take a class on creating products. Okay, so, what this will do, once you see this big picture and you can plot out your own niche, your own traffic, your own list, and your own product funnel, each of the products that you're going to plug in, once you're able to look at all of those and you have it all on one piece of paper and you look at the big picture, you'll be able to zone in and say, okay, that one area, uh, I, I, you know, I need help there. In this area, I need help. In this other area, I'm doing well. And right here, I need to make some tweaks. But until you're able to visualize the entire picture, you won't be able to do that. So my, uh, what, what I recommend that you do is take your entire business and draw it out on a sheet of paper. Draw out exactly what your niche is and why it's a profitable niche. Draw out what your traffic source is going to be. How much traffic do you want? What are you going to do to make that happen? Are you going to spend money? Do you have a budget to spend money on traffic? Or do you, are you going to spend time on traffic? Then same thing with list. What are you going to do to build that list? How are you going to get people to convert? What is the giveaway? How are you going to create that squeeze page? And then how are you going to build the relationship with those individuals? And then finally, what products are you going to take? Are you going to create that provide value to those individuals who, uh, those individuals who are, uh, on that particular list of yours? Okay, so you're going to go back to that list. You're going to go back to that list and find out exactly what they need, and then you're going to create products that meet those particular needs.